What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at AAR headquarters here in Byers, Oklahoma. And I woke up this morning and, well, I did a couple things. Number one, I bought something that I shouldn't have bought, sight unseen from another state. And I decided it's time to sell all of my cars. Well, almost all of my cars. Now I went ahead and lined them up so I wouldn't have to chase them around and play musical cars. But again, you guys remember my 1987 Nissan BE1 that I couldn't sell. I've had a lot of people asking me about it. I'm honestly shocked because when it was for sale, nobody wanted it. So here it is. It's up for sale again. And yes, it still runs. In fact, I just took it on a short drive to go get pictures for Copart. I'm listing this in two different auctions. One of them, Copart, which is the auction that most of you should be able to bid and win these cars at. And I'm also listing them on ACV, which is a dealer-only auction. And ACV is where most of these came from. This is from ACV. This is from ACV. This is from ACV. This is from ACV. In the Monte Carlo SS in the shop is also from ACV Auctions. So I'm putting them in both places, wherever they sell first or whichever place brings the most money, I'm gonna let them go. And I know what you're thinking on the Cadillac, wait a minute. You were supposed to sell that to Carvana. Give me a second, I'll give you the rundown on what happened with Carvana on that one. But anyway, Nissan BE1, yes, runs, drives, and I haven't been able to get it to stall in quite a while. Used to, that was a big problem. It would run for a while and then it would just shut off. Well, I just drove this maybe 10, 15 minutes ago. The temperature should already be coming up. And uh, as you can see, it fires right up. This is after driving it. The RPMs aren't too bad either. They're sitting at 2000 RPM, but I mean, compared to what it was doing, this is not awful. 78,549 kilometers on the odometer, which comes out to like 48,808 miles. The thing's got like no miles on it. It's got a red light over here. If you're wondering what that is, that's the e-brake, okay? There it is. The rear view mirror is no longer with us, guys. I had to rip it off. The thing was just, it was, it was really, it was really getting bad. Here is a sheet of paper that came with the car when I bought it, 87 BE1. There's the VIN number, it's BK1000 And it has a clean and clear Oklahoma title. This is a JDM gray market import, front wheel drive, one liter, four cylinder gasoline with factory air conditioning, and of course the five speed manual transmission. Got your Pioneer deck right there. Yes, the lights and signals and everything work and the horn works and it has no power steering. So uh, it's not that big of a deal, guys. But as you can see, the temperature gauge, hopefully you can see the temp gauge is coming up and it's still running. I don't know, maybe it just needed to get some gas run through it. I honestly don't know. Now it's running at 2,500 RPM, but it's running. That's the point, before it would die. So whatever was going on with the carburetor apparently has started clearing itself out. Now, here's the other thing. I know 2,500 RPM is way too high, but if you guys remember, because it used to die all the time, I went under the hood, I turned the carburetor, I adjusted the throttle way up, guys. Now, I'm not ready to turn it down just yet because I'm not convinced that it's not gonna try to die at some point. So I'm gonna leave it running for a little bit and we'll just come back and see what happens. You can hear the RPMs fluctuating a little bit, but the fact that it's still running is pretty impressive. And this is why I'm not ready to turn the RPMs down yet. I don't. I, I got a feel if I were to turn them down, it'd probably die. But anyway, I think it's a cute little car. I put it back up on Copart. Typically, this thing's been bringing around $3,500 at auction, and I hate getting rid of it because I paid somewhere around six grand for this thing. So I dropped it down to five, and obviously, it's not going to bring five either. But we'll see. We'll see. The highest bid at either one of the auctions, whatever brings the most money is what's going to what's going to take this car home. I'm going to let it go. If that means 3500 bucks, then I'm going to let it go for $3,500, and I'm just going to eat the loss. Next, this one hurts. My 2016 Cadillac ELR. This is my, basically, Chevrolet Volt, but with a Cadillac body. This one really does hurt. Michelin's all the way around, full set of Michelin tires, runs great, drives great. I drove the living hell out of it. No problems with this car at all, other than 
I recently had a TPMS light come on and it's for the left front wheel. Of course, as soon as, as soon as I'm ready to move some of these cars, that's when stuff wants to go wrong. But this, this thing right here, it's still running. I, I'm kind of pissed off about that. I, honestly, it's kind of got me a little angry that it's still running because when I was thinking about keeping it, you couldn't get that thing to stay running. So the left front wheel TPMS sensor is going bad, gone bad, whatever, and no, I'm not going to mess with it. So this one, if you remember, I was supposed to sell to Carvana. Carvana offered me crazy money. I paid, I don't know, $12,000 for this car, I think, and it had a problem charging. The battery wouldn't hold a charge. You could not plug it in. You couldn't do anything with this car other than drive it on gas alone, which was fine. On gas alone, she'll get 33 miles a gallon all day, every day, not a problem. But I took it to the Cadillac dealership because I found out that it was still under warranty. Sure enough, and yes, even today as I film this video, it is still under the factory warranty for the battery and charging system. Cadillac took care of it, they fixed it free of charge. I had them change the oil and filter while they were in there, and I drove it. And I had no problems out of this car other than the TPMS sensor right there. Yes, it charges. In fact, I wanna show you guys this. I'm including the Voltec charger in the trunk, but you're gonna to need to know where it's at. Because if you don't know where it's at, you're gonna think I didn't include it. Right here right there all right there's your voltec charger there's a little air compressor and a little bit of storage i'm going to come out here in a minute and take all my uh tags off of these cars we're not going to take these things out on a drive guys i'm not messing with any of that today you guys have seen these cars we've driven them uh, they all work like they're supposed to and still the little the little nissan's still running unbelievable unbelievable all right, so anyway, here it is, the Cadillac ELR. I want you guys to be able to see the interior and everything of this one as well. This has the full leather package. This is a extremely nice car, guys. If you ever wanted to go hybrid, and I think I've been averaging, I quit driving it a while back, but I think, I think I've been averaging 65, 70 miles a gallon out of this thing. Absolutely incredible. Let's fire it up. And the only light that's gonna come on the dash is the TPMS light. It's unfortunate, but I mean, it is what it is, guys. You have your, uh, your little cubby hole down here, as you can see, works like it's supposed to. Uh, there we go. You gotta know exactly where to touch on it to get it to, to close back down. Service TPMS, of course. So just hit the okay button and you're good. You can clearly see, I have been driving it a little bit today for pictures and stuff, so uh, the battery has 23 miles on it, and then the fuel, it's a just a hair over three quarters of a tank, it's got 222 miles. The current mileage is 63,545, and yes, everything works. Heat, air conditioning, even the motorized, look at that, cup holders. It, I love this. You have sport mode, which, yeah, I don't know. Tour, sport, mountain, hold, everything functions like it should. Radio, uh, and here's something great about this. This has Sirius XM built into it. Somewhere here is, is I don't know. I can't remember where the, uh, I haven't driven it in a while. Did it just die? Hold up. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, as you can see, it's much better than it was, but it did ultimately die. You, look, you got lane keep assist, you got heated steering wheel, you got heated seats, and for the life of me, I can't figure out where Sirius XM is on this. Maybe I gotta hit like the, there it is, I found it. Right, Eagles. Okay. Life in the fast lane is not something you're gonna be living in this Cadillac. It is not a fast car. It's quick, it's decent, it's it's fun. I enjoy it. It gets a lot of looks. It's a beautiful car inside and out. OnStar equipped. Sirius XM is included. It comes with the car it, and it just never expires. So to me, that is a huge bonus. Yes, it has working cruise control and all the headlights, signals, windows, etc., etc., etc. Work, you can see my GM. Cadillac uh, oil change, next due 7, 2 of 24 at 67, 888. So you got a long while before you need to worry about an oil change or anything else on this car. It is ready to go. And, uh, and the wheel key, 
that's important don't want anybody to lose that the wheel key is in there of course you've got your glove box over here you push that button and you've got your books and everything in there as well guys it's a great little car i really enjoyed my time with it but like i said i kind of got up today and i thought man i don't drive half of these cars anymore and i just bought something that I really should not have purchased, and I know better, but I did. So and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So I decided it's time to let some of these things go. And here's another one that just, it, I, I can't even believe that I'm selling this one. I was planning on holding on to this, and I should never I, I should never have said that. Because anytime I decide to hold on to something, it automatically goes up for sale. So a while back, I decided, man, I got this for a pretty good price. I can't remember what it was. Um, maybe it was $10,000 or something like that. I'm going to have to look it up. I also need to look up what I paid for this one. So I paid $12,500 for this one. And I was supposed to sell it to Carvana. Carvana offered me $20,800 for this car. I told you I was going to tell you. So we might as well go ahead and get it over with now. So I took it in, I got it fixed. By the time it was done, the Carvana offer had expired, but I thought, well, no big deal. How much could it have changed, right? It was only like three or four days that the car was in service and the Carvana offer was good for seven. But by the time it was done, I got it back. The offer had expired. Well, Carvana is now offering me, drum roll please, that'll work. Okay, you ready? 11,500 bucks. Guys, I paid $1,000 more for it than that broken and then i fixed it had the oil changed and replaced the windshield wipers and they offered me less than what i paid so uh, needless to say i feel really really dumb for not taking that offer immediately jumping on it and selling the car i should have done it i, I anyway that's the deal carvana decided they want they'll give me 11.5 for it that's not going to happen i will not sell this car um for 11.5, I won't. Um, I don't know what my asking is gonna be on it. All I can tell you is if if, if it brings 12, $12,000, I'll go ahead and let it go. But I won't take 11.5. If we can get 12,000 out of this car, I'm gonna let it go. And I think that's a hell of a deal uh, at either auction because you are not gonna find one of these for anywhere near that anywhere else in good running driving condition with low miles. So now on to this one. This one I paid 10.5 for. This is my one owner 1985 Chevrolet C20. This is a Silverado trim package with the 16 inch tires. It's got a new Edelbrock carburetor, new fuel filter, new plugs, new wires, new cap, new rotor, new air filter, new breather assembly. This one runs and drives out really really well factory r12 air conditioning that still works man this is a beautiful truck guys absolutely gorgeous and what should i ask for it i don't know i really don't know what i would like to get out of this though is at least my money back if i could get 10.5 out of this truck i would be i would be okay with this one so i'm hoping to pretty much get my money back on this one pretty much get my money back on that one probably lose a couple grand on that one um man we'll go ahead and fire this one up i love this truck i really do but it, it's again is it already open no it's again one of those things where what are you gonna do man i got so much stuff down there so many projects i got so much work to get done I really don't need all these additional cars sitting around. And like I said, I bought something new today. So uh, some of this stuff is going to have to go just because of the amount of money I spent today on this new one. Dashboard is in beautiful shape, aside from a few cracks in the speaker grill itself. Um, but other than that, man, like the dash of this car, the interior is absolutely great the horn has a crack right here uh there's a little bit of wear here and there but i mean absolutely beautiful the worst part of it is this seat right here it's going to need to be reupholstered the carpets are good headliners good door panels good and this thing starts on a dime listen to that Again, lights, signals work. Windows, yeah, they work. You just gotta roll them down. I took y'all's advice and I put like a quarter 
behind this piece right here because there's a whistling noise it helped but i think it needs a little more like maybe a nickel or something like that you got your door pockets here the locks work they're all manual power steering works it's two-wheel drive oh i also put brand new tires on this we changed the oil in the oil filter listen to that Just a good old Chevy, man. Just a good old Chevy. Easy to work on. Reliable as all get out. Listen to that thing purr. Now, I had planned on putting some uh, headers on it. I had planned on changing the intake. And I thought maybe at some point I'd put a different engine in it. I don't know. I, I never really decided what to do with this thing. And then after I got sick, most of these cars, I mean all of these cars, just ended up sitting and now that I'm better, I'm just kind of like, I need to get rid of some of these. Now you guys know the routine. I go through these phases, man. I buy these things, I play with them, and then I park them. And then they sit. And then one day I wake up and I'm like, man, I gotta sell this stuff, man. I just got to. Uh, brakes work like they're supposed to. R12 air conditioning that still works. You've got this, uh, whatever this, this placard is here that's got all the information about everything that originally came with this truck. It's got the tow package. Just a solid, solid old truck, man. Uh, this one I really do hate to see go. I really do. But I've had a lot of people telling me, hey, when that thing's ready to go up for sale, let me know. Well, I'm letting everybody know at the same time she's going up for sale. And yes, it even comes with this tag that says uh, Antique Car Arkansas. I have no idea if that plate's any good or not, but I mean, it looks good on the truck. So there it is. All right. I kind of want to take this one for a drive. Oh, I forgot. It's also got a full tank of gas. I filled it up. Uh, and the oil pressure. Look at this. Old school. Where when you hit the gas, the oil pressure moves. Real gauges, guys. Real gauges. Uh, it does have a, an AM radio. Does not work. Of course, like I said, this works. Blower motor works. Hot, cold, all that good stuff. Air conditioning. Air conditioning definitely isn't as cold as you would like it. It's not going to freeze you out in the summertime. I can promise you that. But definitely, uh, definitely still in good working order. You got a uh, ashtray there. You got some paperwork that came with the truck, including the original booklet and uh, all of this original paperwork. This is like the original bill of sale from Hug Chevrolet. This goes back to like 1984 when this thing was sold for $6,000. Brand spanking new. So I'm going to leave that in the glove box that comes with the truck. Go ahead and lock this one up. Yeah, I sure do hate to see this one go, man. It that red on silver two-tone paint, the, the the white wheels with the hubcaps, it's just beautiful. It's beaut and it drives great. Now here's the other thing. I did buy a set of uh Bilstein shocks for this, front and rear. I spent six hundred dollars on them, and I have not had the opportunity to put them in yet. I'm gonna do my best to come back before this thing sells and put those shocks on this truck. If I can't, if I don't have time to put the shocks on, I'll throw them in the front seat. They will be included, so you can throw them. Guys, it's, it's super simple. It's what, two bolts? Two on the bottom, one on top, so there's like three, six for the front, and then I think just two or something for the back. It's no big deal to put the shocks on this. So if I have the time and I'm up to it, I'll do it. If not, I will include it so you'll get those with it. So that brings us next to this one. And I drove this one for quite a while, and I really enjoy this little car, but it just, it doesn't do much for me, I guess is what it really comes down to. It's quick enough, it's fun, it's got the PDK transmission, so automatic, basically, is what I'm trying to say. 
but uh, it's a quick shifting little car. The yellow, I love the color yellow. Beautiful color. Overall, really nice looking little car. It has good tires. Obviously, you can see the convertible top works. It's in good shape. We've had torrential rains and everything down here, and the car is dry as a bone, man. The top does not leak. Now, with that said, I wouldn't run it through an automatic car wash. I've never done it. I don't do that on soft top convertibles. On a hard top, maybe. But on these soft top convertibles, I, would, I never run them through an automatic car wash because you're just asking for trouble. But anyway, here it is. It's a decent looking little car, a good runner, a good driver. It doesn't leak anything. It doesn't smoke. Air conditioning, heat works. Basically the same story as the rest of them. Everything works. It's not 100% perfect. It's missing the wheel liners on the front. It's missing some cover that goes down here. I don't even know where that would have gone but the cover is not there. The spoiler button doesn't work. So when you try to raise the spoiler, it does not raise. And that door handle on the outside needs to be fixed. It rattles and it doesn't open. The window goes down like it's going to open, but it doesn't actually engage the door latch. So you have to open this door from right here. Now with the top down, no problem, not a big deal. Um, let me see if there's something. Oh yeah, you got your cup holders right here. They function like they're supposed to. And then, the glove box you do have your books we've got some parts i don't know what those are but you got all that you got a little ashtray right here and then in here uh auxiliary i guess a little place for uh aux input and to store a few minor things we'll go ahead and fire this one up there it is there are no warnings on the dash other than it says that it needs an oil change. It says service now. Um, and then you hit the enter button and it goes away. Averaging 25.1 miles a gallon. This one has half a tank of fuel and it's already partially warmed up because I was out driving it earlier. Radio make your moves count. sounds great. Your climate controls all work. There's your PDK transmission. Of course, you've got paddle shifters up and down on either side which is nice because it's not like this one is up and this one is down they can be either you can push in um, for up and you push backwards push forwards I should say push that way to upshift and you push this way to downshift on either side I really like that it's a very basic car we'll do the convertible top real quick I definitely want you guys to see that it functions like it's supposed to no clunking or rattling or And that's it. <laughs> that's it. Of course, the important window. And the less important window. I thought it was express. There it is. Just like that. I kind of want to drive this one too. I do. I kind of want to kind of want to take this one out for a drive. It's a it's a lot of fun for a little car, but I mean it just really it does not do anything for me. Um, so I decided to go ahead and sell it and God, I haven't driven this thing in forever Just like the rest of them So these are the four that I decided I'm gonna go ahead and part with right now um, There's a few other ones that I have left That I'm not ready to part with obviously this one right here Every time I say it I end up getting rid of them, but this one right here. I haven't even had the opportunity to get out here and find a bed for it, get the bed replaced, get the leaf springs replaced. I've got two AGM batteries that I bought for it. I need to get those replaced. Like this one, I still have a lot to do to this one and I've got a bit of money to spend on it. This is my 2011 uh, Silverado 3500, obviously Dually Duramax Allison transmission, 160,000 miles, this thing, this thing's an incredible truck, um, but it was in an accident and it definitely needs a little bit of work to get it brought back to its uh, its former glory. And then I do intend, um, once it's all put back together, I do intend on sending it down for paint and I do think I'm going to change the color, but we'll get into that in a different video. So this one obviously not for sale yet, but I, I really would like to get the parts for this and uh, hopefully get working on it soon. Next, the 1995 Pontiac Bonneville with like 175,000 miles. This one is not for sale. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, if I'm ever going to do anything with it. I bought the uh, special scan tool 
so that I can run a proper diagnostic on this and figure out why it started running like crap. Because we took it on its first test drive, it did great, and then about halfway back, seven or so miles into the trip, it could barely pull itself up the hill. The check engine light came on, it was just awful. This car drives great when it's running right, runs great when it's running right, smells good, it's so comfortable. It's not the prettiest hail damage Oklahoma things. You know, it's definitely got hail damage and, but it's got good tires good enough tires, I should say. It's got a few dings and stuff, some scrapage and things going on with it, but overall there's just something about these old Bonnevilles that I just love. So not ready to sell that one and we definitely have some work to, to get done on it. The Ram's not going anywhere. I've decided at least for the time being to hold on to it. This has been my daily driver ever since I went to the hospital. I've taken this home and I've driven this ever since. This is just, right now this is what I'm comfortable in. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, we all came out here and pitched in on the yard work here in Byers, man. This yard was absolutely, it was horrible. It was really bad. I came out and dug out most of the stump that was in the ground. I did this today and uh, it was loaded with ants, man. Ants and larvae just completely full. The goal is when I'm done to get this stump ground down enough to where I can actually just mow right over. But as you can see, the yard out here is absolutely beautiful man uh nick jessica and i we all came out and we just tackled this thing we spent about three three and a half hours out here really hammering on this yard to get it to where it is today also we've said this a hundred times so i'm not going to get into it i got all this stuff here i got to get sold man i got to come out here and just i, I got to get all these wheels and tires and springs and toolboxes headache rack uh the baja bumper off of the raptor that i had we got the monte carlo wheels we got the tires that came off the red truck i got so much stuff out here to sell guys um i need to get this cleaned up we got the wheels off of the uh grand national we got a fluidine radiator that came out of my fox body mustang gt there's just a lot to do and then you get in here and it's just a freaking disaster man it it makes it hard to come back and get to work um when when everything is trashed like i i, I was out here just working I was, I was out here almost every day just busting my hump on this monte carlo you know and uh that last night before the hospital man i was really out here just hammering away on this car and then i ended up in the emergency room and the rest is kind of history so i came out today and i did a lot of work on this car as well i didn't film any of it that's why i'm telling you about it um the uh, water pump. This is the second water pump that I put on this car. Brand new, by the way. These are brand new from AutoZone. Um, maybe you can see this. I'm going to put you guys about right here. Can you see that warpage? Let me pull this out a little bit, man. Uh, the shaft is, is bent or something, man. Take a look. Do you see that? It's bent. So uh, I ended up throwing belts and overheating the car. Yeah, I mean, let me be clear. Temperature got up to about 240, the car is fine. But yeah, this shaft is bent and it wobbled so bad that when I hit the throttle, I didn't realize any of this at the time, but it, it, it was wobbling so bad that I hit the throttle and it threw the belts. It literally took the belts and it just threw them. They mangled themselves into each other. Uh, in fact, here are two of the belts right here. Uh, completely just mangled them, man. Brand new belts. By the way, this belt right here, this little belt, it's not bad. I'm going to keep it in the car as a spare, but as you can see, it, it chipped it up. There are a few places that are, you know, a little torn. I'm not taking any chances. Uh, this belt right here, 30 bucks, man. 30 bucks. The other one's 10. That one was $30. So I came out here today and I ripped everything apart. I replaced the water pump with a factory AC Delco professional grade water pump. No screwing around this time. I checked the play on the shaft, made sure it wasn't warped or anything. Uh, and we got a, uh, we got a mess out here, but we got a new water pump on. I still have to install everything. You know, I got to install the clutch and the fan and all of that good stuff, but I've got everything loosely attached and that's as far as i got my uh my abdomen started hurting where i got that surgery 
and the uh, doctor was very clear to not overdo it, be careful. So I did what I could do. It's mostly together. It's just a matter of coming back, throwing on that clutch and, and, and tightening down all the bolts. And then this thing should be good to hopefully finish because we're close. All we really got left is changing out the heater core, changing out the evaporator, changing out the accumulator, installing the suction hose, filling everything with oil, and then vacuuming it down and filling it with, uh, filling it with Freon, R134, obviously. Uh, and hopefully we'll then have working um, air conditioning. A couple other minor little things to work out, but putting the hood back on, it's a big deal for me. And then hopefully getting the stripe kit for it and sending it for a paint job. I am really excited that this car is like this close to being back on the road. So if you're wondering what I bought, I, I can't believe I bought this. You guys know I recently bought like a 2014 S550. And then right after that, I bought like a 2015 or 2016 E550 convertible. Well, I've been, I've had an itch for a while and I was like, man, I really would love to have another S-Class. Unfortunately, the S550s that I love so much, they're just... <sighs> even with some miles on them, they tend to go for some money, guys. So I've been watching them and I'm seeing them with decent mileage, you know, 100,000, 120,000 miles. They're going for $23,000, $25,000. And I was just like, I don't feel like it's a good enough deal. So something happened to me yesterday and I couldn't believe it. I jumped onto ACV auctions and there was an S-Class that was already up on the block. Like it had three minutes, I had three minutes to go through all the pictures, listen to it run, and then hope to God that I didn't miss something and bid on it. No reserve, meaning pure sale. Whatever it sells for is what it sells for. No ifs, ands, or buts, no negotiating. They're selling it. It's coming from Texas, but it's not just an S-Class, guys. This is an S63 AMG, a 2016 S63 AMG that has been meticulously maintained by the dealership. In fact, it was originally sold right here in Oklahoma by Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City, where John works. Then it was serviced there for two years, and then they took it on trade and they resold it again certified pre-owned to the second owner. It's a three-owner car three owner car. It has been unbelievably well maintained. I'm not going to tell you the miles, but it's good. The miles are good on it. I don't know anything about it. I had no time to really look it over very well. I just rushed through it and I threw a bid in and I thought, we'll see what happens. And I won 21,000, I think $600 is my winning bid. That car 577 horsepower from a twin turbo 5.5 liter V8, all wheel drive, seven speed automatic transmission. And it's got the torque is crazy. It's like 640, 650 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in under four seconds. What a steal of a deal, assuming the car is not completely broken. What a steal of a deal. 20 grand, basically, close enough. Let's round down. 20 grand for that kind of power and performance and luxury. Absolutely insane. So hopefully that car shows up sometime in the near future. It's being shipped obviously from Texas. It's not that far away. And like I said, I bought it and I was like, I gotta get rid of some of these cars, man. Gotta get rid of some of these cars to make room for my new flagship, the new S63 AMG. I can't wait to bring that to you guys. And I hope you're just as excited to see it as I am to get it. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm, I'm much happier than I have been in years. I just feel like such a, well, I feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders and that's kind of true. I've lost close to 20 pounds in the last two and a half, three weeks. It's pretty incredible. And I haven't gone back to my old diet, which is also pretty incredible. I haven't had a soda pop, any type of carbonated drink at all since I went to the hospital. Nothing. I've, I've been drinking water. I've been drinking juice and uh, Gatorade, and, and that's it. And I'm not saying I'm never going to drink a soda again, but I figure it's been, it's been like almost three weeks. I'm on a roll. I've been eating fruits. Um, I've been eating a lot of stuff from home. When I do go out, which isn't very often, when I do go out, I'm getting things like steak, shrimp. Um, I know I know shrimp is fried, but 
still, I'm actually eating a lot better than I have been eating in years. And between the surgeries, everything all combined, I am feeling better than I have felt in years. Much lighter, happier. I am doing great, but I don't want to overdo it. Doc told me for the next two or three weeks, just be careful, pace yourself, and don't overdo it or I'm going to end up back in the hospital again. So a lot of you had questions about that, asking if I've been feeling better. Obviously, I'm feeling great. I'm bringing you as much content as I possibly can, and I hope you enjoy it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.